You see, there's, there's a contradiction there. The, the, the irony is that all, almost every page of Tolle's book dogmatically advocates right beliefs over it against wrong beliefs. It, it just permeates his book. And I say dogmatically because he never gives any argumentation for them. He states them as fact. In fact, there is, with all due respect, an incredible arrogance that runs throughout this book. He says that he doesn't believe anything, he just knows. He is aware, and if you're aware of the facts, if you're aware of truth, well, there's no longer any beliefs. You just are aware of them. So he calls all of his beliefs awareness. But any belief that disagrees with him, that's a rut. That's an obstacle. In fact, he says at one point, uh, uh, here's how certain I am. If I were to meet the Buddha and the Buddha would disagree with me, I would say, whoa, I guess the Buddha can be wrong. It's uh, an incredible arrogance. And so here's just a sampling of a few of the beliefs, just a few of them. The belief that God is love uh, is not absolutely correct. That's a belief. Uh, he could be right. He could be wrong, but it is a belief. And, it's, and if you disagree with him, he thinks that you're wrong and that you, unlike him, don't have uh, enlightenment and awareness. He believes that our true self is one with all things, which is God, the source, the I am, etc., that runs throughout his book. That is a belief. He believes that evil is only a, quote, relative reality. And, it's, I, and what it is is when we identify with forms. When you think that you are the wave instead of the ocean, that's what evil is. Well, that is a belief. I think it's a very mistaken belief. Uh, but evil is, is an absolute reality. He believes that our essence is God and the source of everything. That's a belief. Uh, he, it's one that I think is gravely mistaken. He believes all religions are equally false and equally true, depending on how you use them. That's a quote. And anyone who believes that only your religion is the truth, he says, is using it in service of the ego. Of course, the belief that all religions are equally right and equally wrong is a religious belief that Tolle clearly believes is absolutely true. Do you see the irony in all of this? Every experience we have is good for us uh, because the universe and life, the source, is trying to evolve us. That's a belief. One which I would think that parents of kidnapped children might disagree with. And the kidnapped children themselves might disagree with. Everything is there for your own good. Uh, children of Auschwitz might disagree with that. He believes that, the, that um, uh, Jesus' message was distorted when he began to be worshipped. Organized religions always distorts the truth. Well, that's a belief, one that I think is gravely mistaken. No, he never gives any evidence for this. Like, can you show me when his teachings began to be distorted? Because right from the get-go, people, his earliest disciples, are worshiping him as God. So you should need to offer some evidence that there was original teaching that then got distorted, but he never does that. He just is aware, so he doesn't need to defend himself, apparently. Jesus, like Buddha and other enlightened masters, was an early uh, flower in the evolution of human consciousness. Uh, he was an uh, enlightened human being, but nothing more. That's a belief. Gnosticism, he believes, uh, recovered the original insights of Jesus. Now, Gnosticism is a second and third century movement. Um, and so you would hope that he would give some evidence to uh, demonstrate this rather outrageous claim. But uh, he doesn't because his beliefs are not beliefs. They are just the result of pure awareness. I could go on and on and on. It is, for me, very irritating to have to suffer through this sort of thing, page after page. Well, what's a little bit odd is that for a person who is writing a book to help us become incredibly aware, ultimately aware, he is incredibly unaware of his own belief systems. All right, finally, Tolle uh, consistently twists scriptures to conform with his beliefs. He quotes the Bible a lot. And if you listen to some of the, 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 the transcripts from the class that uh, he had with Oprah, uh, it, they're saturated with the Bible because a lot of the students, when they write in questions, they're about the Bible. And this guy does know his Bible, at least he knows verses. But the use to which he puts them is, uh, frankly, outrageous. Uh, every statement of the Bible is used to support his view that all of reality is ultimately one, and that if you just wake up, you'll realize that you are one with all things. For example, you maybe didn't know this, but when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, what he meant to say was that, the quote, the very being that you are is truth. He was speaking of the I am that forms the essence, identity of every man and woman, every life form, in fact. 
I don't know, I, I would have wished he would have given a, some historical exegetical support for that statement. But when I hear Jesus saying, I'm the way, I am the way, the truth, and the life, it sounds a little different than saying, you are the way, and the truth, and the life. I'm just wondering here. Um, when Jesus talked about heaven, he was, according to Tolle, referring to the inner realm of consciousness. Now, Jesus was a first century Jew, and we know a good bit about how first century Jews thought about heaven and the kingdom of God and things of that sort. And whatever they meant, they did not mean inner realm of consciousness, uh, but uh, totally, uh, nevertheless, makes them uh, believe that. When Jesus told us to deny ourselves, you maybe didn't know this, but he was actually telling us to negate the illusion of the self. Did you know that? That's good to know. When Jesus referred to e the eternal life, he was actually referring to the dimension of the formless within you. You've always existed, you always will exist, and when Jesus said eternal life, well, he's referring to that eternal part of you. Of course, in the Bible, the eternal life is a gift that you're given as, a, as an act of God. It's not an in, innate thing, uh, but uh, totally doesn't deal with that at all. When Jesus said, the truth shall set you free, what he meant was only the truth of who you are, which is, of course, the truth of what totally says you are, only that truth will set you free. When Jesus said, blessed are the meek, he was referring to those who are egoless, and feel their oneness with the whole and the source. No Jew of the first century would have thought this way. Uh, but this, he, he totally virtually turns Jesus and all the New Testament authors into New Age proponents by giving them this rereading. The power of the, the story of the prodigal son is a story of the, quote, journey from unconscious perfection through apparent imperfection and evil unto conscious perfection. I think some New Testament scholars might disagree with that, uh, but that's the result of uh, pure awareness. When Jesus died on the cross, he was giving us an, archetype, an archetypal image of how our evolving consciousness is burning up our ego. In fact, it's so sad when you read some of uh, Oprah's interactions with Tole on this course, where she says things like, and she's just like, you know, in awe of this man. She goes, you know, I used to think that Jesus came and died for us. And, and now I realize that he came and, and he died to, to, to manifest what we're all supposed to do, which is burn away our ego. And, and he means so much more to me now that I've gotten the, the truth. Even the new earth, the Bible talks about, he says, which is the title of his book, uh, this new earth it refers to the emergence of the transformed state of human consciousness reflected in the physical realm. Well, the Bible refers to the new earth, the new heavens and the new earth a number of times. And it's all about God breaking into the world and bringing about a new earth, a new state of reality. Uh, it has nothing to do with this subjective, evolving consciousness or anything like that. If Tolle had come clean and said, okay, folks, I'm writing a book that propounds uh, my beliefs that are completely antithetical to Christianity, I would respect the man. I would like that. C come clean, just tell us what you're doing. But it's this idea that these aren't beliefs at all. These are, this is just pure awareness and uh, that we want to escape beliefs, the, the level of, of unawareness on his part or deception uh, is absolutely amazing. And what concerns me is that uh, it seems that many, many followers of Jesus mean very well, but they are naively letting themselves being sucked into this, uh, uh, this uh, contradictory, false, and deceptive way of thinking. Okay, there's my not, con 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 not, not overly kind review of his book. Let's take a five-minute break, write down the questions, and then we'll collect them and go to the Q&A time.